What do most average consumers, I hate that term, look for in a good mid-range smartphone? The basics like a good display, balanced performance, great battery life, good feature-rich software experience, and a camera that can take good pictures, right? Well, guess what? The Samsung Galaxy M55 gets most of the basics right. Most of it. Let's get down to business. This is our Galaxy M55 first impressions. I'm Ershad. You're watching Tracker Tech English, your destination for detailed, incisive gadget reviews. Let's quickly unbox the phone and you get this really big box with no charger in the box. All you get inside the box is the phone, the semi ejector tool, a few documents and no charger. Now Samsung has used polycarbonate for the construction of the phone, whether it's the back or the sides. But because of the use of that material, the phone feels deceptively light. Samsung has kept the weight of the phone under 180 grams, which is really nice. You know what looks like plastic as a material is making a great comeback on phones. And I don't really mind it if it actually helps make phones thinner and lighter. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Talking about thinner, the Samsung Galaxy M55 is also very slim. It's just 7.8 millimeters thick. And combine that thickness with the light weight of the phone, the in-hand feel is pretty good. And of course, Samsung has stuck to its industrial design language that it follows across different series, whether it's the S series, the M series, or the A series. So you get these three individual rings for the camera. So even if you buy an M series phone, you get the feel of using an S series one, I'm guessing. Here are things that I wish the Samsung Galaxy M55 had though, a branded glass protection for the display and some sort of IP rating. One area where Samsung manages to impress is the display. So you get a large 6.7 inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh rate as well. And Samsung gives you 1000 nits of peak brightness with the Vision Booster technology. But look at what Samsung did now. It made the bezels really slim and the punch hole is really tiny too. Isn't this what you guys wanted? It could have been symmetrical, but I doubt it matters to anyone else apart from me, does it? The colors of the display are vibrant and punchy when you want it. They're also very natural when you want it because you get the settings in the display. The display is also HDR10 Plus certified and you can play HDR videos on YouTube, but Netflix support is not available at the moment. But the thousand nits of peak brightness with the Vision Booster technology definitely helps when you take the phone outdoors. The sunlight legibility is actually pretty good. Now to complement the display, you've got a stereo speaker setup, which is pretty decent too. Now, since it's an AMOLED display, you get an in-display fingerprint scanner and it unlocks really fast as well. You also get a decent haptic feedback. At least it's not rattly. It's kind of soft, but it's not too bad. Now, you and I both knew this before getting into the video. The display on this phone is going to be good because it's a Samsung after all. Now, one good thing that Samsung has done is it has introduced the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1. Still a two-year-old processor, but it's a good one because it's based on a four nanometer fabrication process and you can expect an Android 2 score of about 6 lakhs. We also got a CPU throttle score of about 80% in our 40 thread 30 minute run, which is pretty decent. And even our 3 Mark wireless test test, the GPU didn't throttle as much and we got 93.7% stability. COD and BGMI can also run at 60 FPS. We played it, not a problem there. By the way, the phone is available in three variants, 8128, 8256, and 12256. Yep, 12 GB RAM for the first time on an M series phone. But this is still LPDDR 4X RAM type and UFS 3.1 storage. But when we tested it, the UFS 3.1 speeds were lower than normal. Now, while the phone is not a performance beast, everyday performance on this phone is pretty sorted for basic usage. It's very good. In fact, the animations are pretty smooth, like I said. Well, what about the battery? Well, despite being slim, the phone has a 5000mAh battery inside it. And when you couple that with the efficient 4 nanometer fabrication process of the Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, you can expect good battery life. If you're using it moderately, it should easily last you a day and a half of full usage, about 7 to 8 hours of screen on time. Also, the kicker this time around is that the Samsung Galaxy M55 supports 45 watt fast charging for the very first time on an M series phone. Definitely better than the 25 watt that Samsung was providing till now, and 45 watt is a good middle ground. Although, you will have to buy the charger separately, so keep that in mind. Software experience is where Samsung hits it out of the park. You get One UI 6.1 with the promise of 4 plus 5 years of software updates as well. And you know what, One UI 6.1 is smooth, the animations are really well tuned, especially for a mid-range phone like the Samsung Galaxy N55. I face literally no stutters in the time that I use the phone. Plus, with the support for NFC, you also get access to Samsung Wallet, which for me is a system seller. This is one of the main reasons why I use the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra daily. Samsung Wallet is honestly a game changer. You also get Samsung Knock security 
and Knox Vault, all of that are huge advantages. Everything is premium except for the fact that you do get glance integration on the lock screen and there are a few third party apps that are pre-installed. Thankfully, you can switch off the glance integration and you can uninstall the apps. So that's a good thing. If you ask me, One UI 6.1 is easily the best Android experience for a phone under Rs 30,000. Well, what about the network capabilities? You get support for Wi-Fi 6 and NFC. Of course, there's Samsung Wallet and you also get support for 13 5G bands. The Galaxy M55 also has a 50 MP primary camera with optical image stabilization and 8 MP ultra wide angle camera and a 2 MP macro camera plus 50 MP selfie camera as well. Features like nitrography have also been ported to the Samsung Galaxy M55. There's also the dual recording option where you can actually shoot with two cameras at the same time and Samsung's single take is present as well. Recording videos using the primary camera and selfie camera is possible at 4K 30 FPS with stabilization. With the ultra wide, you can only shoot 1080p 30 FPS. Now we haven't tested out the cameras in detail, but you're seeing the photos on the screen right now. All these photos will, you know, collate that in a G drive link, put it in the description section below and go check it out. Now the Samsung Galaxy M15 has also launched alongside the Samsung Galaxy M55. This phone is priced at 12 to double nine, but with offers, you can get it for 11 triple nine. Now for that price, you get a Super AMOLED display, 6,000 mAh battery and four plus five years of software updates as well. Yes, you don't get a lot of frills, but for Samsung fans, this is definitely a good proposition, especially considering that great One UI software software experience that you get with the Galaxy M55. Now, would you consider buying one and would you guys like to see a detailed review or a comparison with any other phone? Do let us know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.